Hi everyone and welcome to the sixth tutorial in this JavaScript tutorial series where we create the game Asteroids or something similar. This is currently what our game does. We can go around shooting asteroids and we can lose lives and so on. So wouldn't it be nice if we had a scoring system? So you can go ahead and download this code from the link below if you like. So first of all, let's create some constants to represent how many points each of our asteroids are worth. So roid points large. Now in the original game, the large asteroids were worth 20 points, so we'll do the same thing. So this is the points scored for a large asteroid. So go ahead and copy that a couple of times. We also have medium asteroids worth 50 points, medium. And we also have small asteroids worth 100 points because they're the hardest to hit. We'll also need a variable, so go down to where we de declare our variables, called score, that'll be our current score. And in this new game method, we'll want to reset that to zero. So put that in there, score equals zero. Now where will we increment our score? Well, that occurs when we destroy an asteroid, doesn't it? So go up to our destroy asteroid method, here we go. And in where we deal with our large asteroids, we can simply go score plus equals roid, roid points large. We'll do a similar thing inside the medium part of this statement. There we go, score plus equal roids points medium. And to handle small, we can just simply put an else in here. Else if it's not medium or not large, we'll add the small points. Now let's go down and draw the score. Uh, how about we put the score in the top right hand corner of the screen. So just after we draw the lives, we can draw the score. And let's copy and paste some of this code up here to draw text. Okay. So the text align, because we're on the top right hand corner, we'll change that to right. The baseline can be middle, that's fine. The fill style, we just need plain white. We don't need to change the transparency. The font, we don't really need small caps because it's only going to be numbers. Uh, the text size, pixels, stage over sans mono is fine. Fill text will be filling the score. The position will be the canvas width, but we do want a slight margin. So let's base it off our lives margin. So this is ship size, so we'll have ship size divided by 2 because the uh, ship is the center of the ship. Ship size divided by 2. And the Y position will be the same, exactly the same as our ship, so ship size. Let's test that. Great, we have a zero in the top right hand corner, that's promising. Let's shoot one of these big ones. We get 20 points, that's good. Now a medium one. Oops, I shot another big one. Medium one was worth 50, and a small one should be worth, that should bring us to 190. Uh, 340? Yep, yeah, that's working well. Now how about in the middle, the top middle of the screen, we put a high score. So let's go ahead and create a high score variable. So head back up the top and declare that variable. So just next to where we declare the score, we can also say score high. And inside our new game function, how about we initialize that, score high. Now ultimately we'd like to grab this from somewhere, like a saved location or something. But just to begin with, let's just set that to say 100, just to make sure that it works. Uh, where, do we, where will we handle the high score? Well, up in our destroy asteroid method, where we're incrementing the score, just after we do that, how about we do a check, check high score. And that's simply going to be a condition. So if the score is greater than the high score, then we want to set the high score to equal the score. So score high will equal score. Of course we'll need to draw that, so head back down to where we draw our score. Uh, draw the score. We're going to do a very similar thing with the high score. Draw the high score. 
The text line is going to be the center because we want it in the top middle of the screen. Text baseline is fine. The fill style is white. The font is, how about we set this to a bit of a smaller font so it doesn't take away from the current score. So we'll say times by 0.75. Just put that in brackets. Otherwise the font is the same. The fill text will be the score high. The position will be the middle of the screen, so it'll be the canvas width divided by two, and it'll be the same Y, the same Y component. Let's test that. Okay, the 100, it's not exactly in the center of the screen, is it? Ah, that's a spelling. I've got the Australian spelling, not the American spelling, so center with an ER. Let's just double check that. Good. I'm thinking we'll probably need some sort of text before that, so maybe say, I'm going to use the word best, but you could use high or top or whatever. Best plus the score high. Let's see if that looks okay. Yeah, that looks okay. Now let's test to see if it works. So we'll be trying to get more than 100. There we go. So it's updating to match the highest score. Obviously the biggest issue is that when we reset this, it goes back to 100. We'll want it to persist between browser sessions and indefinitely, basically. So how can we do that? In the past we would have used cookies, but with HTML5 we can use local storage, local web storage. So zoom back up to our new game method where we set the high score. We can just write local storage dot get item. Now this get item function requires a key, which is a string, like this is like a save key. Now this only has to be unique within our code. It doesn't have to be unique across all our software or whatever. I believe it's based on the URL. So let's create a constant. Prefix it with uh, save key. Save key uh, score. So it's just a string. We can set, call it, for example, high score. And this will be the save key for local storage of score, of high score. Good, go back down to new game. Put that in there, save key score. Let's see what that does. Right. So when we haven't set it, we haven't set it yet, it comes back null. So we'll have to check for that. So how about we pull that down just underneath we do, where we do all this. Ship equals new ship. Get the high score from local storage. So how about we create a storage string. So score string will equal all of that. So that's our string. Now if that string, if score string equals null, then we want to set the score to, so set the high score to equal zero. That means they haven't set a high score yet. Else we want to set this high score to equal the score string, but because it's a string we'll have to pass int, so pass int uh, requires a string, which is just the score string. Hopefully that will work, let's give it a go. Best is zero. Now although the score is going up, if we re reset this, it's not storing it, is it? So we'll have to store it somewhere. So up where we increment our score and test for the high score inside our destroy asteroids method. So check high score here. We can just set it here. So we can go local storage set item. We need the key, so the save key. Save key score and the value will be the high score. Score high. And hopefully that should be everything. Right, so we've currently got a best score of zero. Now we put a best of 20, let's reset. Yeah, it's persisting. So that should persist between browser sessions, between 
games between everything. So let's try again, 190, reset. Good. And let's, just to make sure it's really working, how about we destroy our ship? So we should have a high score. Let's get a high score first. 310, 410. Let's smash the ship a few times. 460. 560. And one more life left. 610. So this should reset. Yep, the score's reset, but our best score is still 610. Great. Well, that will do us for our tutorial today. It was only a bit of a shorter one. Uh, next time, I think we'll focus on getting the sound, the game sound up and running. Until next time, talk to you then. Bye.